Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I want to talk about battery solutions. That's right, power. Now, as our cameras get more advanced, they are draining our batteries or putting them to work more than ever. Now, this past weekend, I was hired to shoot a wedding. I was hired to take care of the photography as well as the videography. Now, photography was pretty simple. I had my two Nikon cameras ready to go, the Z9 and Z8. But for my video, I had three Lumix cameras ready to rock and roll. And the most important thing I was worried about is how do I make sure that I don't run out of power during my project? I'm going to discuss some of the battery solutions that are available as well as my personal opinions. Let's get to it. Before we start talking about power and batteries, I want to let you know I'm clearly not a electrician and nor am I even close to even thinking I'm an electrician. So if I don't get the mathematical nuances of understanding battery power, please keep your comments down below. I don't care. Feel free to share them with me. Either way, I want to discuss from my own rudimentary understanding of battery and power and voltage with all of you and hopefully save you some time and most importantly, money. So let's get to it. When I was putting together my video rigs for my Lumix cameras, I was using first, uh, just to let you know, the Lumix S5 Mark II. I had two of those and one Lumix S1H. Now, when I wanted to shoot the ceremony, I pretty much want to be able to just press record and not have to worry about two things. The video stopping from recording, which Lumix thankfully has unlimited record time. And I want to make sure that the battery life will not fail on me. So being that I have shot 14 short films and um, have done other client projects actually for video, I have various experiences with different types of battery solutions. Before we get into the various types of battery solutions for videography, I want to discuss all about battery capacity and what that means. So here at rebel.cell.com, we're going to concentrate on capacity watt hours. Now, uh, which is just another way to measure the capacity of battery is in watt hours, which is calculated by multiplying the number of amps with the battery voltage. The reason why I want to share that with you is because you will commonly see certain ratings on the batteries I will be mentioning, and that will help you to understand the amount of capacity a battery has when comparing it to another. The very first one that comes with my Lumix cameras or your, or let's say, um, Panasonic, Canon or Sony cameras is the one that comes with it. That's right. It's like this one right here. Now, this little battery right here is actually pretty good. Um, but this one has 16 watts an hour, 16 watt hours. See right there, 16. It says it right over here, 16 watt hours. And so this thing, is actually not bad at all when it comes to recording video. Um, would I trust it for a full day of, of, of weddings? Only if I had maybe 10 of these. Uh, but nonetheless, Lumix batteries actually do hold up pretty well. Um, and, and, and also you can also charge these USB-C. So that's pretty cool too. So as long as you keep this in the Lumix S5 Mark II, the GH6, S5 or something like that, uh, you just connect the USB-C to the camera and you can charge these while using them. So the camera can be on operating and it will be charging. So with all that said, it's a pretty good battery, 16 watts an hour. We all know these kind of batteries. It's the, it's the, it's the standard battery that comes with your camera. If you're in desperate need to have more power on a consistent basis without carrying 10, 12 batteries to a project, then you're going to want to look at a V mount battery. But the reason why they call it V mount, you see this little connection here. It's basically like a V. It kind of se it's self explanatory and you usually need a plate like this one. Now this particular one is 95. This 95 is really sig uh, signifies 95 watt hours. So clearly a much larger capacity to hold um, the whole power in this battery compared to this one, which is the 16. So 16 here, 95 here. But you can see you're increasing the size. A, a benefit of the V mount is that obviously you're going to hold, you're going to have a ton of these batteries all packed into this. So that's really cool. Um, in my older V, uh, uh, V mount battery, uh, it has a USB C A connection right here, the USB C A, and it has a D tap right there. Now, the way you connect a V mount to your 
rig or your camera is going to, you're going to need like a plate like this. See this plate right here? This is a V-mount plate. This is my S1H. And here's a V-mount plate right there. Now the V-mount plate will connect to your bottom of your rig like so. But uh, what's really cool is that this battery will power everything that's attached to this V-mount plate. Okay, so I'm going to attach the plate like so. It clicks in, and then now you turn on the power right up top there. Okay, once you have that power, then anything connected to your plate here, I have a 12, what is it, 7.2 volt, uh, a 5 volt, and I have a 12 volt. So that means I can power a heck of a lot of things through those ports right here. And also another DTAP connection right there. So I could do my field monitor with either uh, the 7.2 volt and, or if I have a direct to DTAP, I could do that too and then power my camera straight to the DTAP of the plate or the uh, battery. I tend to like do the, do the plate because when I turn off the plate, it turns off the entire power to the battery. If you keep it connected to the battery, it, even though the camera's um, um, not being used, it will slowly drain. Not, not that I've had a serious issue, but it does do that. So that's your V-mount battery and you will need a V-mount plate. And then you would need to get yourself some rails in order to connect it. And then that's how you're building out your rig from there. And then you add a lens, et cetera, et cetera. But you will need these two, uh, these things. Plate, you need the V-mount plate. You need your rails. And then you're going to also, as I've mentioned in previous videos, you need a cage. You need a cage. This is my small rig cage with a top handle. You will need that in order to have this all together. That's thus the video rig. So that's a 95 watt hour V-mount. I have right here a 220 watt hour. Now this thing's huge. Now, I do want to let you know that if you plan on traveling, you can't travel on airplanes with anything larger than a 95 watt hour. So if you if you like the size of this, it, um, do remember that you cannot go on airplanes with this. You will need a 95 or lower. So with all that said, the big one is great if you're like recording locally and it's going to be an all day gig or you're doing film work and stuff and you, you want to uh, have to swap the batteries a lot less throughout the day. This thing's going to keep you going for a hell of a long time. OK, so they all come with a power uh, button there. Again, here you go. USB uh, USB port here and a D tap right there. And then, as I said, you just connect it right here as I'm fumbling and boom you're off the races but you can see right here it's already adding size and for sure weight to your rig i could feel the difference between this one and the 95 very easily here was a problem that i came across uh often i either have to carry a ton of these okay and then or a couple of these but in having to use one of these v-mount batteries i always have to have a V-mount plate. So really, I needed two things in order for this whole rig to really be powered. Now, that's not the end of the world. And if you have to do it, that's fine. But a V-mount battery can cost you, I don't know, 135, 150 bucks for a 95 or something like that. Okay. And all of a sudden, um, now you have to buy the V-mount plate and the V-mount plate could be another 100 bucks. So you're really good at getting in there to almost 250 bucks to get a plate and a battery just to power your entire camera rig. So I was looking at solutions on how can I make my uh, my video rig more compact, OK, more compact and thus making my workflow more efficient. Now, uh, small rig has a battery um, that is their small mini V-mount battery, which I think is really amazing. But it's a bit little, I'm not going to lie, it's costly. It costs more than the average one. So I stumbled upon this one during the last week of December. Yes, right after Christmas, things are going on sale. I was looking for a V-mount battery because I'm filming the last two days of my short film next week. So I need some solutions. Plus, I had this wedding that I told you about to shoot. So I said, all right, you know what? I can totally use a modern V-mount battery because I feel like these are great, but they're a bit dated in technology. USB, USB A 
ports. Like, come on, really? And no other USB-C attached to it and only a D-tap. Now, it's a solid battery. It'll, it, it, trust me, this thing will last all damn day. But I stumbled upon Neewer's V-mount battery. Now, this thing is a 90, it's rated 95 watt hours. Okay. Uh, 90, uh, oh, excuse me. It says power 99 watt hours. So, but it's much smaller. It's the same size as small rigs V mount battery, which is this one's a mini and that one's a mini as well. And, um, most importantly, it has this. Let me show you. Let me show you. What's great about this newer battery. First of all, it was about, it was almost a hundred dollars cheaper than small rigs at the same capacity. Okay. At the same capacity, cheaper. I first saw it for 140 bucks. It went cheaper. And when it hit $124, I had, I just, I ordered it immediately. Here's the most beautiful part about it. You have your D tap right here. Okay. You have your eight volt and 12 volt ports right up top. Okay. You see those ports right there. And then here's another one. I love this part. You have USB A and C ports on this side. Okay, look at that. And if you press the battery, it's going to tell you all the ratings or the power you have right there. A beautiful display. Guess what? Now I do not need this battery, this V-mount plate. I can get rid of it, thus decreasing the amount of weight, the size of my rig. So I said, okay. Let's give this, that's why I said, let's give it a go. Now, I'm going to show you right now my rig with this v mini V-mount battery attached to the S5 Mark II. Okay, so here is the Lumix S5 Mark II video rig that I put together. You can see the, I have a 50 mil f1.4 Lumix lens here, S5 Mark II in a small rig cage. And then I also have um, the mini, I have a V-mount plate which is just a very slim, thin one from small rig. It's awesome because it has an Arca Swiss plate on the bottom. You can just put this on many types of tripods. I love it. And I have a small rig top handle. And of course, uh, I have a monitor. This is a seven inch field monitor from Feel World. It's been my first, it was my first one. It's my ride or die. It's great. Very low power draw from the battery. So I really love it. it. Has peak focus and some other stuff that I use. Um, and it's really good. So anyway, and I have a mini matte box on the front from small rig as well. Yes, I, I like small rig. I tend to stick with small rig. So anywho, so with all that said, here is the mini V mount battery from Neewer and it connects very easily to the plate. Here's the V mount. You just connect it on the back. And it snaps right in. So you can already tell off top, it's much smaller than the V, the old V mount battery that I was using, which is some company I've never heard of, but I bought it from Amazon. Um, it's about how much ta less taller. I'm going to say it's, uh, you know, 20, 25% smaller all the way around. You can see by the, how wide it is. It's much bigger, the, the old traditional one. And, and, and you're getting less ports, as I mentioned earlier. This one, I have so many ports here. I have the field world power connected to the top of the V mount, uh, battery. And then I have my USB C, C, uh, USB C and USB A ports ready to go if I need it for something. And then, um, I have my S5 Mark II D, uh, with a dummy battery here i have a dummy battery right in there and then i have that going to the d tap port of the v mount battery right there so everything you see right here is powered by this mini v mount battery right here from newer and uh so all i gotta do is turn on the turn on the battery there's now it's on and then you can see power's already going to my monitor there it is. And power's already going to the camera. So we'll turn that on. And then there you go. Power's, it's already juiced up. Uh, camera's on. And the, um, uh, monitor is powered all with the V mount battery. Okay. All with it. Fraction of the size, way more many ports, smaller rig. Look how small and tight this rig is, but I can record 6K open gate. 
No problem with this rig for hours and hours. Okay. Hours and hours. And, uh, being that this camera is dual card slot, I can keep this puppy going. I love it. It could fit on, uh, if I need to make it into a shoulder rig, I could, but I can handhold this thing all day. That's what's really awesome about it. I'm really happy about that. Using this battery for the first time during a wedding. It was a six hour wedding. I used it on and off in those six hours and by the end of the day i was only down to 92 percent so you're literally getting a little over five times the amount in that one mini v-mount battery that means you're carrying about five or six of these in your pocket when you connect that plus as i said you're re you're replacing the entire v-mount plate with this kind of a battery okay and this thing was only 125 dollars a freaking bargain, a freaking bargain. If you're curious about the options that I just showed you throughout this video, I'll leave links in the description section for you to check out each battery option for yourself. Any questions, comments, concern, come on, post those comments, let me hear them. I'll be glad to at least help you out the best way I can. Again, I'm not a electrician. So don't get me with all the math stuff. I tried to keep it very straightforward and simple because watts hours is generally how people understand the battery capacity when searching for battery solutions for your video rig. I really enjoyed putting this one together. This really just came sporadically because when I bought this battery, it really inspired me on how well it made my rig that much more efficient. I want to bring that all to you as well if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more don't forget to press that like that share to subscribe and you already know smash that bell icon to get notifications for my upcoming content i'm robert silver and until next time keep shooting and stay creative